Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome if you're new, my name is Liz and today's video is very exciting because we are getting the opportunity to look at some of the new releases for the 2022 Spooky Town collection. This does include two Michaels exclusives and an accessory piece. Thank you so much to Lee Max for giving us the opportunity to preview these buildings. I know some of you are thinking, okay, it's only summer, slow down, you know, it's not Halloween yet, but I mean, especially if you're into village collecting, you've likely already been thinking about the village, planning, preparing. I know for me, I start thinking about Halloween, usually in the spring, so uh, we're right on track here. So I definitely don't think it's too early, but I'd love to hear what your favorite building is of the five that we're reviewing today. So let's Let's jump right in. There'll be lots of information in the description and a few of the channels I actually like to watch uh, in preparation for my uh, village every year. So I hope you enjoy those and let's jump into it. All right, so this first piece I wanna show you is actually a Michaels 2022 exclusive and it's called The Future Looks Dark. And this is a really cool piece, lots of really great detail and it's a very mysterious looking building. So I'll show you a few of the different things I love about it. This is a lighted ceramic piece. This one has no animation or sounds, but that's actually my favorite. Those are the buildings I tend to gravitate towards. I do love a lot of the animation uh, that Lee Max does, but if you're just looking for a lighted piece, you might really, really like this one. And actually it's kind of a different bulb. I've never seen them do this style of bulb before. It is battery operated, so you don't need to plug it in, which always comes in handy, especially if you've been collecting villages for a while, you know it's really easy to run out of place to plug things in. So I think the battery operated buildings are very convenient. I'll show you here another display I did just to sort of demonstrate how you could use these buildings in different ways. If you didn't want to make a full village, you could use one individual piece as decor. So I just put out some tarot cards and a few different things and created a little scene. This is going to go in my downtown area of my spooky town village. If you've seen my tours before, you know I have a downtown area where I have shops and restaurants and bars and different things. So that's where this is going to go. It's going to go right next to my other Limax fortune telling building. I I haven't really seen many. I don't know if there's been any in between that one and then when this one was created. So I was really excited to see this. I think it's a really fun theme. So we'll start at the top of the building here. We have a witch weather vane. Now this is removable as well as the two signs, the tarot cards at the side of the building and the palm at the other side of the building. And that's really convenient because the thing is a lot of times these buildings, it's easy to snap things off. I've done it. I actually did it with this building. I accidentally snapped off the tarot sign on the left side of the building, but it's really easy to fix with a little bit of super glue. If you're just getting into collecting villages, I definitely recommend keeping some super glue nearby because it does happen. But it's just very important to be very careful when removing these buildings from the styrofoam. So those three pieces are removable. I really look for the lighted buildings because I love windows. There's also the future looks dark, a sign about tarot readings. I love the stained glass. I think it looks really warm and cozy. There's a palmistry sign, the tarot sign at the side of the building. And of course the back is fully detailed as well with the brick and you have the little removable bulb, very easy to turn on and off. And I'll just show you the little bulb here. So you can see it looks quite different than the regular style bulbs, but it fits in there nice and secure. And then you could remove the battery cord there. All right, so on the side of the building, we have what looks to be like maybe somebody reaching out of the window to try and get our attention. We also have, oh, there's another one. We have the entrance to the basement, some nice windows with the warm glow from inside, as well as some boarded up windows. I really love this rounded part of the building. I think it looks very gothic and uh, a cool detail of this building. We have a side entrance and some more windows as well as the sign that I accidentally snapped off. <laughs> In the front of the building, we have lots of signs as you saw, the stained glass, the windows. I just love the windows. That's really a detail that I often look for in buildings. Even this window, it says keep out uh, with a little board across it. So lots of really great detail. I love the stairwell with the two little lanterns there and all of the windows, especially the stained glass one. I think that's really cool. And then here at the bottom, we have psychic readings, no refunds. Again, I love the stairwell with the cat there. 
we've got the window, which you can see right in uh, inside the shop. It says, Madam Serena sees all, knows all. You can see the uh, tarot cards there and the crystal ball. And one of the things I think I forgot to mention is I love the sign at the very top of the building, the horoscope readings sign. I think that one is really nice. So this is The Future Looks Dark. This is a Michaels 2022 exclusive. So definitely check this one out if you're interested in adding it to your collection. All right, so this next building I wanna show you is quite a bit larger than the one we just looked at. This is Agatha's Apothecary. This one surprised me the most out of the buildings this year. This one, first of all, is massive. It's a huge building. It has more of a plasticky material as opposed to the ceramic. I think that the paint job on this piece is really great and it's rather light considering the size so I don't know if that has to do with the materials but lots to look at here there's so much to talk about here I think if this was the one piece you chose this would be an amazing choice because there's just so much going on it's a massive building so keep that in mind uh, I will show you a little comparison here between the last building we just looked at so why don't we start at the top and work our way down here so again I really think Lee Max did a really great job this year with just the architecture of the building I think there's lots of little unique touches I like the window here at the side we have a little balcony with a witch pouring some ingredients into uh, whatever this skeleton is mixing up here so uh, I love the balcony detail I don't I, ha I haven't seen a balcony on a building in quite some time I don't think and uh, the skeleton is stirring up some sort of concoction here there's uh, some frogs and what looks like maybe grapes in here so that's kind of cool and it turns the animation on this building is really really cool right below that we have the Agatha's apothecary sign with a little bit of a nod to like that coffee house look there uh, with the uh, little mortar and pestle and that detail is around the building there's some jack-o'-lanterns on the side, and I really like the font that they used for Agatha's Apothecary. I think it looks really pretty. It almost looks like a chalkboard type sign. Below that, there are some more signs. There's another Apothecary sign and some advertisements. And here they have a rotating detail. Now, I don't know, this looks like maybe ingredients or different uh, things that the, that the uh, store owners here would use. And really cool detail here with the light up you can see inside. I thought that was really cool. So like I said, there's just a lot to look at here between the windows and the siding and the cobblestone and all the different signs and different things happening. Moving to the side here, we've got a witch here with some more light up detail. You've got the little railings here leading up to the door into the store and another balcony. And this witch is just working. Above that witch, you have the mortar and pestle again with this skull shape. Kind of a cool detail. The chimney is really detailed too. Like all of the little, you can see right into the siding. This is an incredibly tactile building. Like just the texture of it is really cool. And at the side, we have some more animation. So there is what looks to be like some sort of, what do you call this? Cog? <laughs> I don't know what it's called, but it's rotating and it's really cool. I love the neon pipe here. This really stands out when the building is lit up. We've got some questionable uh, ingredients or something going on here. I don't know what's happening here, but at the top we've got this little guy hanging out, just uh, checking out the sunset. But again, you can see the siding here and the window and the little chimneys. They're just, it's so cool. That doesn't mean there's not detail on the back as well. It almost looks like eyes here at the back of the uh, building. So just the details, it does. It kind of looks like eyes. Some more windows. What I really think is cool is even the windows on this building, you can kind of see uh, with this big front window here, you can see that uh, rotating inside, which I thought was really cool. The other side of the building, we have another logo here with the prescription logo. I like to imagine that this is a, I guess, pharmacy and gift shop. I think there's lots going on here because this building is huge. Like there's just so much. Now soundtrack. Now, because this is an animated piece, like I said with the first building, I tend to be drawn to just the lighted buildings. I know that might be boring for some people. Some people will really gravitate towards the animation and the lights and the sounds. Uh, so if that's what you're looking for, that's what this building provides. There's so much animation and a soundtrack, and I will show you the soundtrack. Typically, I tend to not play the soundtracks just because of the collection. You know, they kind of, you can't really hear them individually anyways. It would be really fun though, I mean, if you have children or if you're having guests over to kind of play around with the sounds and play the different soundtracks. I just find them repetitive and I, I tend not to leave them on, but it's interesting to uh, to listen to. 
And let's just listen to the soundtrack really quick together. I hope I hope that picked up <laughs> the sound. So again, you know, I think it's really cute, but I typically don't even turn on the soundtracks. But some people do really enjoy them. But overall, really cool piece. This one is big. I think this might be one of the larger pieces this year. I don't know out of the ones I got anyways. I mean, this is one of the, the biggest boxes for sure. So a uh, lot to look at here. Really happy with this. Definitely recommend. I don't know if I mentioned it, but I also love the frog... Uh, little statues on top of the balcony there. I think they did a great job with this piece. So this is Agatha's Apothecary and we will move on to the next building. All right, so here we are looking at the third building, actually a different day. So the lighting is a little bit different because it's raining outside, but I do have the light here so we can make sure to see all of these details. And this piece is actually another Michaels 2022 exclusive. Uh, so keep that in mind. And this one is called the Gloom Room Club. This one I think is going to be very, very popular this year. And this one fits a lot of themes as well. Now, the first thing I actually thought of when I saw this building, you might remember a movie called The Mask. It had Jim Carrey and Cameron Diaz. In that movie, there was this club with dancing and music and the bouncer at the front of the building also reminded me of that movie. So uh, that's the first thing I thought of, but this would really fit a lot of different themes. I mean, you've got the zombie theme, all of the dancers and the employees at this particular club are zombies. This would also fit in really great with your bars and restaurants in your village setting. And then of course, music. Actually, Limax over the past couple of years has come out with quite a few different music themed buildings. So if you have those, this one would definitely fit right in. So why don't we start at the front, the entrance to the club, the amazing sign, the Gloom Room Club. This is very 1920s. You have the bouncer. And like I said, I mean, other than the dancers and the bar area. This is the other thing I noticed was the cute little zombie bouncer. You see the little ropes where people can line up to get into the club. And then another really great detail is actually the drinks menu at the side of the building. There's also a little sign uh, talking about a dance marathon that you can join. So then we approach the bar and this is a really cool detail. We have somebody ordering a drink. We have the amazing zombie bartender and inside behind the bartender you can actually see the shelf detail where all of the drinks would be and this area of the bar is actually one of the spots where you'll notice the amazing lights to this piece above the bar we have the pick your poison sign and then above that wrapped around the whole building we have this amazing detail of all of the musicians with their instruments and they're very colorful that's the thing about this building is there's lots of color um, all around the building in their outfits and the lights lights and the paint. We have to look at this rooftop dance section. This is really cool. Now, I don't have anything like this in my collection. So on the side of the building, we do have some more images of the musicians. We've got another sign in that 1920s style. There's a coffin and a gravestone and some really cool speakers. And like with most of the animated pieces, this one is not battery operated. This one does require you to plug it in. So keep that in mind as far as space goes. Overall, I mean, I think this is a really great building. I think the only thing that I would prefer is actually less lights, but that's just me. If you really like lights, this is your building for sure. I just prefer the fading lights personally. And I thought it would be really cool if these had lit up. But overall, I mean, this is an amazing building. So let me know, is this a building that you would add to your collection? Is this one of the ones that you have your eye on? Let me know where would you put it in your village and we will jump to the next building. Here we are, friends, here we go back at the Green Room Club. It's the big meat. At least if you still have your knees, <laughs> she be going to bring onto the dance floor and enter our dance marathon. It will be the experience of a lifetime. You'll however then back last <laughs> And moving right along, 
on to our fourth building today. This is Bailey and Bella's Pet Shop. This piece is adorable. It is battery operated, so there's no sounds or animation with this one, but it is super cute. And one thing I noticed about this one is if you're not into the zombies and the werewolves and the skeletons and the ghosts, you really might like this one because it looks like an actual building in a real town. It has my number one favorite, and that is the window with the scene inside. Here we have a little box. It looks like a cardboard box with Halloween lights, cute little dog, a trick-or-treater, and we have someone with their ladder. Looks like they're decorating. Two little jack-o'-lanterns. I love these little pumpkin lights. I do notice these lights on a lot of the different Limax buildings, and I really like how this upstairs portion almost looks like an apartment. The sign is really cute. We have a little dog, looks like a terrier and a cat. And I love the entrance. There's some advertisement for grooming, a little welcome mat. Moving to the side of the building, we have another grooming sign. And one thing I really like about this building actually is the realistic colors. It really does look like an actual building that you would see in a downtown area. And I love the greenery here. More detail on the back and you have your on off switch there. Even the roof is really cute. And on the other side, you have the other grooming advertisement. And these windows, you can see the light glowing through. It's only the ones on the back that you can't. But all of the other windows have that effect where you can see the warm glow from the inside. I think this one would really make a nice gift too if you have somebody in your life that is either a groomer or just really loves animals. I think this one would be a really fun gift. A great addition to any little village. And the final building today, I do have an accessory piece to show you. We're going to unbox it together. But this is the witch's cottage. And you know what, if you really like the witches theme for your Limax village, I think you'll be really happy with this one. Anything that looks like a cottage, I love. I love this look. I think it's adorable. Again, a battery operated piece. So you don't have to worry about space to plug this in. So I know exactly where I'm putting this in my village. It's going to go in the Enchanted Forest. By the way, if you want to see last year's Halloween tour of the village, it's very in-depth. I will link that below and uh, you'll, you'll know exactly where this is going to go. I bet you'll be able to guess, but this is really, really cute. And I'll just show you some of the details. So again, it has that very charming cottage look to it. Let's look at a few of the details. So why don't we start at the door? So there's a little sign that says, time to cast some spells. I noticed almost all of the jack-o'-lanterns at this cottage have one eye. There's some apples there says eat if you dare. I really like this portion of the cottage with the little open window here. There's a sign that says the witches are in and this witch looks like she's flying right out of the cottage on her broomstick. I love the greenery going up the chimney and it looks like they have some clothing hanging outside. So I don't know if they're just doing laundry or if this is a shop of some kind. At the top of the building we have a little witch sitting with her cat and some crows and a really cute looking chimney. So this one is adorable. This again is going to go in the enchanted forest area of my village, but you could actually put this in with other houses. So if you have trick or treat houses, I actually think this one would work because I mean, it could technically be people dressed up for Halloween. I really love when Lee Max does houses. In fact, I'd love to see more, especially like trick or treat houses. And there you have the last building that I have to show you today, but stick around because I do have a quick little unboxing of an accessory that I was so excited to see. I feel like if you love vintage Halloween, you're going to be very excited about what I have to show you next. Last thing we're going to look at today is actually a lighted accessory piece. And these look exactly like blow molds. So if you like the vintage style blow molds, I think you're going to be very excited about this accessory piece. So today we mostly looked at buildings, but of course Lee Max has a lot of accent pieces. There's of course the trees. That one's a little old. <laughs> I've pulled some of the leaves off of that one, but there, there's a newer version. But every year they have these trees. There's lights. And of course this mat is something by Lee Max. Little people for your village, zombies, things like that. And I'm so excited to open this one. So let's take a look. So this one is three AA batteries. Oops. 
super excited to show you these. All right, how cute are these? These are so adorable. And these are made to look like blow molds. And if you don't know what a blow mold is, basically, they're just like this. This actually feels exactly like them. But they're just basically plastic decor that a lot of people use to decorate the outside of their houses. And they're just very nostalgic for a lot of people. Oftentimes, if you're drawn to the blow molds, it's just because you remember seeing them growing up. But these are so cute. I'm really excited to test these out. The great thing about these two is you could really put them in any area of your village. A trick-or-treat neighborhood. You could put them outside of a store. And of course, you could just buy these on their own as their own little piece. You could do a craft with them. I think these would look really cute on a tiny little shelf. There's lots you could do with these. So let's plug them in and see what they look like. Look how cute. So I'll be sure to show you what they look like with the lights off too. And I'll actually set up a little scene so you can see what they look like. Okay. 